I love the expression, labour of love. To define it, it means something you do because you enjoy it, and not because you will receive money or praise for it. To me, when I have been doing something that feels like a labour of love, it makes me feel more alive. It doesn't feel like hard work to me. And for the things in my life, those most important things like raising my daughter, um, for actually developing young people, for working on new and exciting ideas um, and things that will actually really benefit others. Those are the things that make me feel alive and really are something that I believe to be a labour of love in my own life. Somebody I've definitely seen who's been doing something has been a labour of love for her is my wife, Nisha, who's been the operations manager for uh, St. Saviour Sunbury the past two years. And she would always really come home and you ask her, uh, you know, your other half, I'm sure for many of you, how your day has been. And the things that she would always highlight are those people that have been impacted, those that have come to know Jesus, those that have given, uh, have really benefited from uh, recovery groups that have been run, uh, for those that have been given like the food and supplies that they need and really helped. Those are the things that she would really highlight. And for me, it's obvious that that would be a labour of love for her. Of course, we have a number of amazing volunteers a part of the St. Saviour's family. And I really want to say thank you because you make this work. You make church happen. And I also think about our key workers and really want to make a commitment to always being praying for them. I read a quote recently from uh, an a NHS nurse who said that, yes, this is difficult, but I'm willing to do it to help people get better. And for me, that sounds like somebody who believes in it being a labour of love. And what I believe this expression can mean and how it is explained is that it can bring us closer to the heart of God. I'm sure many of us will know that Boris Johnson was in hospital and um, he was uh, not doing too well, suffering from uh, COVID-19. But once he came out, he showed a real deep sense of gratefulness and appreciation to the NHS and calling out nurses by name. And he said this, that the NHS is unconquerable and that it is powered by love. That expression really spoke to me and I was thinking, can I currently say that the same about our faith? Do we walk and live in that knowledge that our faith, that our hope in Jesus Christ is unconquerable? And is it powered by love? Is that the output of what Jesus has done for us in our lives? Well, somebody who's responded in love and gratefulness is, of course, Captain Tom Moore. You'll be hearing, uh, you probably would have heard a lot about him. Um, and he raised money for the NHS, serving his country once again, as he did before in the war. And he did it as a response to the love and care that he received through the NHS. The health secretary said he was an inspiration. He's had a number of comments and uh, messages of, you know, congratulations. And he's even inspired young people who have said they are now raising money for the NHS because of what he did. What an amazing person and someone we can really look to and is such a light at this time. And he even said that this is an awful crisis, but there are still small pieces of light that people can still shine at this time. So what does it look like to have a labour of love that is linked to God's kingdom? And can we bring it into a new world that we will definitely be entering into once, there has, uh, once this crisis has been? See, a recent poll that was conducted about the recent lockdown and all that's been happening in the world, 54% said they hope to change some things about their life and hope to have learned something you see, it's not for us to say that we just want to go back to how things always were. We want some really positive things and changes to come from it. You see, there's a real sense that maybe people who are answering this, that they're understanding the more important things. I know for myself that I am really um, understanding that actually I need to 
invest more in the things that really matter. And really reflect on the things in my own life that have given me the most joy and given me the, the thoughts of just how I've been able to reflect God's, um, God's glory and God's goodness into other people. This passage that has just been read is all about redemption. It's all about redeemed for a purpose because of a precious lamb, Jesus, the Messiah. It's a pretty concise summary of what has been done. And it's a pretty simple response of what we need to do. And sometimes we don't need to look into like great detail on passages. And this is what I like about this passage is that it's very much to the point. And it, it tells us what's been done and what we need to do as, as, as people who trust in what Jesus has done for us on the cross. One question I think about when I read that passage was, for what reason have I been redeemed? Why me? Why any of us? What will redemption do in your life? And what is a knock-on effect to others? It talks in the start of this passage about gold and silver. Obviously, these things are very highly regarded and still are actually to this day, um, as, as many people will enjoy jewellery of this kind as well. Uh, and, and obviously has value in other things. But this has no comparison to what Jesus has done for us. There's no value of this compared to what he did. And it talks in uh, verse 21 about two very precious things we have that can easily be shared with others. And that's faith and that's hope. And these are the things that we certainly can't be put to the side at this time. And actually, we need to sh willingly share these things with others. And I've seen a great example of that through my in-laws, who at eight o'clock, I believe, every evening, and they started this back in Holy Week, um, they have a big speaker that they play music out. And what they do is they play Amazing Grace. Um, and actually, the neighbours have really enjoyed it. They've enjoyed hearing music and it brings the community together. And actually, they become a little bit of a request DJ, I guess, and they put on some other songs as well um, after that song, but they always start with that song, which is so important. And they even played a worship song from Hillsong, um, and they found out through somebody else, uh, a neighbour, I'm sure, was that they um, they were heard this song, and they were like, wow, that's such a great song. And they weren't a Christian, and actually they came to, you know, find out what the song was. And so they were listening to worship songs that they would have never come across before unless my in-laws did that. So it's, it's a small thing, but it's one that reaches out and actually shares love in some way. And it's inviting the community to understand the faith and love that we have. In verse 22, it's a real challenge to us because it's talking about us being purified. And because of that, we need to be someone who obeys the truth. That if we believe in being redeemed by the blood of Jesus, that we need to love deeply. That's our calling. A real simple image that I can think of, and I'm sure we would... You could uh, think about one very clear night, and we've had a lot of really nice uh, clear days, definitely, being very blessed with the, the sunshine and, and clear nights. That You'll obviously see the moon in the sky. It's very evident. Um, it really lights up in all the darkness around, particularly if you're out in a very rural area. Um, and actually, it's not that the moon is powered by like the, the, like, like the sun is, but the sun, the beacon of light, the source of light, reflects you know the moon reflects the sun's light and i think that's what we are called to do that from this source of light that we get from jesus the example that he set is uh, is that we need to be reflecting that we need to be reflecting that in all we do um to know that we can actually reflect the goodness of god and that is what we will do and that is how we show a response in being obeying what God has called us to do. You see in verse 22 of this passage as well, 
it talks it, it mentions a word that should keep us all very accountable and it's very uh, and it's a great word it's it's sincere which also means to be authentic and that comes from a deep love our love must be authentic a very good example in the bible of uh, authentic love is one of the times we do see jesus show real emotion and he was crying um, because when Mary was broken and she saw, he saw how broken Mary was due to the death of her brother Lazarus. And as many of us will know in this passage, Jesus brought Lazarus back from the dead. And actually this was going to be a sign of something that he would later defeat as well. He would defeat death on the cross. But it's that love. And in John chapter 11 verse 33 talks about how Jesus was deeply moved in spirit and he was troubled. Now, do we feel like that? Are we troubled in our hearts about the things we see, the outreach, the things we need to do? Do we need to connect with that more? It was not long ago that we were celebrating Jesus defeating death on the cross. But why did he do it? He did it for us. He did it out of love. And so us obeying what Jesus did, to be troubled by what he did for our very sake, that we need to do something to show love to others. Well, there's a few things that I can talk about that, um, that we can do in response in this season. You know, one thing that we can do and something I've been trying to do as well is that I've been trying to invest in relationships, particularly of those people that I know, trying to pick up the phone a bit more. And I've had some great in-depth conversations that I might have never had before if we weren't in the season that we're in. We can invest in community more. You know, it might be sending a note to your local neighbours, you know, writing your number down and just saying, hey, if you need some help, I'm here. We're here thinking of you. We were really blessed recently with a food parcel and the amount of food we had, we thought there's no way we're going to be able to use all this, keep all this. And so we shared it with a neighbour. And from what they did, and they were so grateful for it, that they were able to share it with a, another neighbour and someone they actually knew who really needed it. Like an elderly person who didn't have any family nearby. And she texted me and said, wow, he was just so happy. He was so grateful for what, um, for this gift. And it was a really simple thing to do. Um, and something that we received that was really lovely was a paper note saying that, oh, we love your rainbow, like come and see ours, come to, to the front of our house and enjoy that as well. And that is just a way that we can really build community. Also, this is a time that we can invest in ourselves and you'll be I'm sure seeing a number of things that you could be doing as courses or learning, but invest in yourself as a disciple. Like learn passages, read more scripture, have some reading plans you can go through, spend more time in prayer with God, understanding purposes and what want, what um, he wants you to do. These are the things that we can be doing at this time. As I wrap up, I just want to uh, show an image and hopefully you'll be seeing an image right now of a father giving a piece of himself to his son, filling that gap. And this is something me and my sister gave to my father and something we think is so, so true. He did so much. He did everything out of a deep love and my mum did for that matter. They both did. And it's hugely influenced who I am today. And I can't help from that deep love that I've had in my life that I want to share it with others because deep love is giving part of ourselves. And it's something that I want to reflect in my family's life, in my friendships I have, um, in the people I meet. And yeah, I could definitely get better, but it's something that is built on a solid foundation. And our Father in Heaven has that love for us. You see, Jesus didn't just give a part of himself, but he gave all of himself for us. You see, we were told that we were bought with a price, but actually I think of it differently. I think we were invested in by Jesus because his example, what he did on the cross, what he invested in with those 12 disciples, then went on to invest in others. 
there was a chain of change makers through the power of love that we still see today that people inspired by the example of Jesus, the ultimate sacrifice for us, do great things out of a deep, sincere love. Maybe we struggle with that. Maybe we feel we haven't really felt that deep love in our life, so it's hard to replicate. But seek him. He wants you. He's our, he's our shepherd. He never leaves the one behind. He wants us. Read about the prodigal son, and I think you'll see uh, the prodigal son passage, because you'll see a real evidence of Jesus' heart for others. It's an amazing passage. Martin Luther King said this, that life's most persistent and urgent question is what are you doing for others? And I want you to think about that. And maybe write a few things down. Keep yourself accountable. Put it up on a, a fridge, on a, on a door somewhere in, in your home, your, wherever, wherever you live. Like, keep yourself accountable to that and what you could be doing. I just want to close in prayer. And I want to think around that image a little bit more. What do you need from your Father in Heaven right now? Maybe it's a deeper love for others and, and you need something like compassion. You need grace. You need understanding, humility. Or maybe you need something that you need God to take something off your shoulders. Something that's already having a burden at this time on you. Maybe it's anxiety. Maybe it's hopelessness, loneliness grief. I was reminded in 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 7 it says give your anxiety to Jesus because he cares for you and he really does. So because of the love that he has given us because of what Jesus Christ has done let us share that love to others. Let me just close in prayer. Father God we thank you for today. We thank you for your your goodness and your mercy. We thank you that we have been redeemed. That Jesus, you paid the ultimate cost on the cross for us because you loved us so deeply. That you were troubled, you were moved by the people you met and saw. And Lord, we just want to ask today that we would have that same heart that you do. That all those examples that you shared, how you reached out to so many, that society wrote off, Lord, that we would actually be able to reflect that love into the lives around us, to those we know, to those we don't. We just pray you go with us, have faith and hope in you, and willingly share it with others, and know that you go with us and fuel us through the power of the cross. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen.